I thought you might be interested in seeing this. This is from a long time ago. In fact, it's so old that a lot of the parts you're looking at came from Radio Shack when they were still in business. So, uh, but back then it was very common to have integrated circuits that required dual voltage. So you would have to have plus and you would have to have minus voltages. And that's why there's uh, two knobs on here. So you can set the minus and set the plus. I got this out because I'm planning on trying to put some little uh, voltage meters on here so I don't have to hook up my voltage meter through there and get a lot of extra wiring. So it'd be nice if I just had those little things that you can mount on here and I would know the voltage without uh, jumping through a lot of hoops. But let's uh, do a walk around on the outside of this and then I will open it up and show you the inside. And if you're interested, I can make a video on how I, uh, I built this thing. This is obviously the front and as I mentioned before, this is the negative side and this is the positive side. This is just an indicator lamp that tells when the power is on and then this is the minus adjust and the plus adjust. And this side is nothing but vents. Uh, and the back side has a little twist to it. It has the capability of doing both uh, 110 and 220 volts because I've lived around the world in different places and that was kind of an important thing. That's where the power cord goes in. Obviously the power switch, fuse, and this little oddity right here. This actually supplies 9 volts AC out. So I've used this for testing transformers in the past so I can give it a low voltage and then check the other side of the transformer and then I know uh, how many turns it is. Um, and the other side is basically a repeat. Uh, it's just some vents. The bottom side, nothing fancy. These screws will have meaning later when we open it up. And then the top, nothing special. So let's, uh, let's take our part and see what's happening on the inside where the interesting stuff is going on. I always like to get my fingers in the way. It adds excitement or something, I don't know. There's that side. Flip her over. This box is a Radio Shack. The nice thing about this box is that the upper case is steel, so it gives it strength. And the lower side of the case is aluminum. And I oftentimes use that as a heat sink. And if you do things right, you've got an isolated heat sink. Okay, she's being a little stubborn, but there we are. Let's look around in general before we delve into it. Back here, this is the uh, nine volt that I was talking about. And these blue wires come up here to the front side of the transformer. And again, that puts out nine volts. Also back here is the on off switch right about there. There's the uh, AC where the power plug goes in there. There's the uh, switch for the uh, 110 to 20 volts. And that's what all these wires are for. It has uh, a uh, four inputs on the uh, primary back here. Also over here is the fuse and we'll tip this sideways so you can see more of what's going on in a second. Back to our general tour. On this side we have the uh, high uh, center tap and low on the transformer and they come over here to a board I made and all this board does is it goes across the top of two capacitors and it has these small filter capacitors and then it has larger capacitors underneath here. Uh, this is the adjustment. These are some 5k pots and a good good upgrade would be to change these for multi-turn pots would make a lot more accurate. So these are the pots. I lied to you earlier. This is the positive side. This is the negative side. I think I had that backwards. Over here is an LM317T. It's heat sunk both through this heat sink right here and through the bottom. And then this circuitry right here is the standard circuitry you'll get if you buy an LM317. Uh, it's the manufacturer's suggested circuitry. And on this side is an interesting thing. It's an LM337T, which is a negative voltage regulator. And of course it can regulate negative voltage where this one does positive. 
Okay, so let's turn this sideways. Oh, I forgot the pilot lamp. There's a pilot lamp right there. Over here is a filter. So the AC wires just pass through this filter to remove any noise. Here we have a uh, full wave bridge rectifier. A uh, couple heavy duty capacitors, 4,700 volts, 50, uh, 4,700 microfarads, 50 volts. And that's pretty much it. You can kind of see a little bit more down in there. All these wires are Radio Shack wires. And back over on this side, let's see what else comes into view. You can see the heat sink here and then the LM317. Okay, so let's uh, do this again, only a lot closer. I may get a little redundant here, but we're going to try to get this as close as we can. This is the uh, connection for the 9 volts AC. This is the AC plug. Comes in from the wall. This, let me just unplug these, get them out of the way. These are the AC lines to go to the transformer. This side goes to the transformer and this side goes to the rest of the system. This is that uh, switch that converts from 220 to 110 and it's on a circuit board. All this came out of a printer, a really old printer. So I just uh, snatched that out of there and repurposed it. There again is the, is the uh, fuse. Uh, this is our this is our ferrite uh, bead that takes the noise out of the system. And let's scoot on around the corner here. This is nothing more than basically this is a bus. There's three wires. It comes along here like this. One, two, three. I've got it marked yellow, green, and red. And let's see, capacitors. These are just noise capacitors to take some of it out of the uh, out of the uh, bus and these wires coming in again are the from the uh, transformer so comes in on this side let's keep things on camera comes in on this side uh, goes down the bus like that and just three wires uh, again the capacitors are underneath here so the capacitors are soldered across here and here and here and here just like these filter capacitors now moving on around let's get a little better look at what's going up on in the front of this there's still some holdover from the radio shack circuitry uh, they don't recommend the use of tantalum capacitors anymore uh, they're expensive and they go bad pretty quickly um, but there's this of course i'm going to have a uh, diagram in the back of the uh, back of the video so that you can look at that and spend your time doing it, uh, peruse at your leisure. So these two are pretty much symmetrical. So you have the minus and the plus, assuming I haven't switched those around again. But uh, you'll notice that everything that's over here is over here and vice versa. Um, and then the pilot, there's just a single pilot that tells me when there's power to the whole system. And if we pull some of these wires out of the way this time around, we can see a little bit better down in there. Refocus it and we'll, uh, there we go. So now you can see what's going on down here in the bottom. We have the uh, LM337T and the heat sink. It's also uh, been heat sink through the, uh, through the base, which I mentioned earlier as aluminum. And then there's a resistor, a, uh, diode uh, and again symmetrical on the other side lm317t so really the only difference is the circuitry is mirrored across the ground and it's got a negative here and a positive here otherwise the circuitry is exactly the same and i think that's pretty much it for our tour um, i will i will put the entire circuitry so i will put the uh this part of the circuit in there this and then of course i'll put in this part as uh, as separate pieces and then all combined so you can see what's going on 
Okay, well, that's it for this dual voltage power supply. I hope you found that useful and interesting in your home electronic work.